I greet you all. My name is Yemi uh, You are welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. If you haven't, please like our video. And more importantly, please share our videos. As you are sharing these videos, this testimony that I am giving, they are going to benefit somebody. They are going to transform somebody's life for the better. Please endeavor to share. God bless you. Um, I'm going to have a straight talk, but I'm going to precede that uh, straight talk with a prayer. Father, I just want to thank you for this great opportunity you've granted me to say a few words to your children today as to how good you have been to me. And I am going to do this in series. And I pray that as I do them, my Father, my God, I pray that lives shall be transformed. I pray that you will use this message to minister to their lives. Uh, I pray, Lord God Almighty, I'm not saying I'm a perfect person. I'm far from it. Please let not my errors or iniquities uh, disturb the message that I'm about to pass to your people. I pray as this message goes to them, let it be a message of hope, message of transformation. And to you, let it be a message that will bring glory honor and adoration to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, I just want to take a small passage here. Uh, Hebrews 7.22. Hebrews 7.22. By this also has Jesus become the surety of a better covenant. By this also has Jesus become the surety of a better covenant. Let me sing that song because it's most applicable to me. I, I thank God for inspiring that little thing with, and I thank God it is trending now. Oni duro mi e she o bo she ni yan lo duro ni ati saso bo she ni yan lo duro ni ati sinregu bo she ni yan lo duro ni ati mayomi oni duro mi e she o i give glory honor for an adoration to God today i know what is trending now is about what uh, the senior singer to fella be the comments she passed on the younger singers music and uh, i hope that to fella has learned something. My prayer for her is to change. Just go to God, ask for forgiveness and, you know, apologize to God, apologize to this girl. Yes. I mean, it's only a heart that is proud and God hates pride that will make a mistake and will not, you know, correct it. So please, correct your error. It's so serious. It is so serious. It's more than you think it is. God has lifted you up and <laughs> I don't want you to come down. As the Lord God Almighty lives, God will give you that humble spirit to do the needful. Ask for forgiveness from God, apologize to your girl, and then move on. Talk about this fans, I appeal to you. Please, 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 temper justice with mercy. However, she needs to show remorse, and God Almighty will help her to overcome that challenge. Now, I want to, I, I did say something earlier. I said, it's not, a, it's not a sermon, it's a real life experience. If God had not been my surety, if God has not been my guarantor, if God has not been my helper, if God has not been my supporter, if God has not been my provider, great provider for that matter, if God has not been who he is to me, a merciful God, who would I have been? What would, let me start with my mother. My mother would have lived a miserable life if God had not sent me to this world. That is the truth. She would have died miserable, but she died well, she died, she enjoyed herself, she, she died, she ate the fruit of her labor. God sent me to her at the age of 46. God spared her life for another 46 years, out of which 18 years of which she spent with me enjoying herself. My mother finished well. I pray that I will even finish better in the mighty name of Jesus. That's the woman God particularly sent me to, to support so that she doesn't regret her life. I give glory to God today. I, that he gave me that grace to fulfill the Mess, I mean, the purpose for which he has sent me to her. Not only that, uh, there was a time that purpose would not have been fulfilled. I have told the stories, if you watch my previous videos, I talk about the various covenants between me and my mother and how God made them happen. Because he is our surety. Just as Christ is the surety of the new covenant in Hebrews 
722 that we read. Christ is the surety of the new covenant that delivered us from the Old Testament laws that was that were there, 613 plus, that were there, that gave us no salvation. But with Christ being the surety of the New Testament, which simply summarized is love your God with the whole of your heart, Matthew 22, and then do justice, love your neighbor as yourself, Luke 11, 41, then Matthew 23, 23, and James 1, 27. If God had not been a surety, Ebola Baruku would have gone all about sacrificing to fake gods, to things that would not have saved us, to meaningless, you know, to gods that have mouth that could not speak, have ears but could not hear, if not for God. Now I thank God for how he stood by me. Like I was say, that fulfill a 10 year gap would have been in my life that my dream for my mommy would not have been achieved. That period I had no capacity. I was still trying to find my own feet and my mother was aging and she was practically dying. But God sent a helper. My dear uncle, Julius Kayo, dear uncle, you are a mother of 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 a my mother from your house, that was the period my mother would have died, helpless. But from your house, my mother migrated to her own house, which got built for us in Lagos. So I thank you. Now, on education, okay, like my, I said that people were questioning, you know, so they, let me leave that one alone. Education. You see, when God wants to stand for you, He drives everybody away, He drives the so called helpers away who would have come back and say, you know, uh, we did it. He does not share his glory with anybody. That is why till tomorrow, it took me some time to understand this message. But I kept saying nobody was helping me. Nobody was helping me in particular. My education in particular. I said nobody. But my mother, my sister, my own eldest sister vowed that if she had only a single rapallet, she would sell it to send me to school. Would I say I didn't have somebody? Then in between, my brother came and took me to Lagos and said, I will send you to school this and that. And even when we got to Lagos, God did not make it happen for him to fulfill his promises. And then when we, when I was still in right here, uh, somebody took me to MSC, promised to send me to school, and um, at the end of the day, it plopped. He showed me the way to the farm, and that was not my vision. And I was delivered two and a half months after. I was back home. Okay, all that happened. Even when we now got to Lagos, I wasn't in a regular school. I was enrolled in a lesson, and um, the secretarial lesson, typing short standard English. At a point, God placed an embargo on the support I was getting from my own brother who was willing so people were willing to help me somehow in spite of the dearth of help as what well. people my brother my elder sister my uncle uncle Israel uh, uh, may your uh, gentle soul rest in perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus these people were ready to stand up for my education but God never permitted it one thing falls upon the other and they never happen because God was there as my only guru my helper my surety my pillar he wants to take the glory alone. And he then equipped me. That's the mystery. He equipped me with special ability. How can a primary six school certificate holder say he wants to read on his own for correspondent by correspondence colleges and all that? And he goes ahead and started working as a factory worker and so on and so forth. How and then but God, where God was taking me, he knew it. My vision was clear. I wanted to become a lawyer. I wanted to become a professional teacher. Those two were my early life visions career-wise. But God added more to them later. In fact, I wanted to qualify in two areas. He made me qualify in five areas. That is, in uh, the law that I wanted, in the um, teaching that I wanted, because I didn't go for formal teaching, but I taught somehow, you know, informally. Then he made me qualify in ad uh, arbitration, chartered arbitrator. He made me qualify in human resources management, and he made me qualify as a preacher and teacher of the most important Mess, uh, message in the world, the word of God. So I give glory to him. But now, ordinarily, I targeted that ordinarily once you graduate between 20, 20, 21, 22, but my graduation didn't come as, as a university graduate. It didn't come up until I was 45. Then a year after, 46, I got called into the Nigerian bar. To God be the glory. Now, after all the efforts, I remember somebody now, my dear brother, Uncle 
Lawrence Kayo De Ojo. You may be watching this video. I can't repay you for what you did for me. Because I remember those days. I will come to exam success, which was close to your house. That was the correspondent college office at uh, at uh, Fadi Yiwa area. And I will stop over in your house. You will feed me, you give me transport money. Then I was left with just paying for my exam, I mean, a correspondence college fees. But you brought me so close. I'm happy you are alive today. And I can't repay you, I know that. Wherever you go, wherever your children go, the favors of the Lord shall never depart from them. The favors of man shall never depart from them. I greet you, I thank you. God used you mightily at that period that you were needed most in my life. Then, Uncle Shafet, God bless you. God bless you. I remember, apart, you didn't have money to teach me, even if you had, even if God did not even give you, place it upon your heart. I, apart from living with you, I live with you. You took good care of me. Food was not my problem when I was with you. And not only that, you took interest in my education. You were singularly teaching me English at home. So I thank you. I remember you for good today. God will always remember you for good and reward you for good. Like I said, silver and gold have I not. How much do I have? But only God can repay you and they will reward you abundantly. So, only Duro, my God, took me by his right hand and led me step by step throughout the period of my trials, let me call it, because education is a trial. It requires perseverance, it requires painstaking, it requires amen. But what mattered most, or what matters most is that, just like the name of that singer, Allah Shion, is the one records the victory in the end. Lord, my father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Okay, I people would have taken the glory if you had allowed all those people who were very much willing to send me to school, to send me to school. How do I know that? By the time at the age of 36, I was changing my name to my biological father's name. Another story entirely, which only you delivered me because people predicted even something worse than death for me. But because you are my God, only do you believe Allah to let you believe me. You stood by me, and the decision I took never backfired. It favored me, it favored the generations after me. So I give you glory. Then by the time I changed, and it got to a point that People were persuading me, don't change your name. This is that, this and that, and so on and so forth. But your spirit in me and my consultation with those who know you, men of God who knew you, who encouraged me to toe the path of truth. I remember Pastor uh, Lawrence Osagi of our line Bible ministry, where, where I was in Jesha then, was the one that said, Look, son, my brother, you know the truth. Follow the truth. If you toe the path of lies and emotions, you are toying with your salvation. Your father is alive. Go back to him. She cannot you are of age. And thank you, Daddy. Baba, you stood by me when I was afraid. Late Hector, Chief Hector Omoba and Mommy Victoria Omoba. You stood by me. You even told me your own story as to some of the experiences you had in life. I cannot be narrating those ones here. But they gave me courage to go on the path of truth. And finally, when it was down upon me that I must throw this path. One day, I was wondering, I said, ah. some people were saying, because your father didn't take care of you, he didn't send you to school, those who have been feeding you this and that, you want to bite the fingers that uh, fed you. I said, how, how come? Then when somebody threatened that, you know, if you leave, you will die. Then I told them, if it was true that the blood of pa Gabriel Omoboyega runs in my veins, then I will not die. But if it is untrue, then I must die. Pressures were mounted, everything here and there. Today is his history. But what came to me is that it was at this point I realized that he spoke to me silently that now, didn't I show you why I didn't allow anybody to send me to school? That I did it myself. So that nobody can take the glory or share the glory with me. Nobody can share the glory with me. I don't want anybody to share the glory with me. So I give you glory, Father. I honor you. I thank you. There are more to say about my marriage, <laughs> parenting, about my career. But in every situation, you stood by me in a unique way. And all the glory and adoration comes back to you today. Thank you, Father. Glory be to you. This is just part one. As I'm inspired, I'm still going to release more. But I sing that song again. As your children will be sharing this message, Lord, be their surety. 
be their support, be their pillar. I know some people are in the street, I watch them. But today I'm glorifying your holy name. Heavenly Father, please let these people who are in their own battlefields today, let them glorify your name and your name. Let all glory, honor, and adoration come back unto you on every one of us. I'm going to record, I mean, post on this YouTube a lot of helpers that people will marvel. Yes. To God be the glory. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Share this message. God bless you. Ensure you have a focus, you work hard, and you just trust in the Lord. He never fails. I am an, uh, I'm a product of God's mercy, and that's why he must take all the glory alone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.